you very much, Mr. President, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and future Toastmasters. And future Toastmasters. Um, as Mr. Toastmaster said, this is the story of my son Michael, it is spelled M-I-K-E-L, but it is pronounced Michael, and how he came into my life. And no, this is not about the facts of life, it's a bit of a different story like that. But first, I'd like to give you a little background about who I am, where I come from, what I do, and why I joined Toastmasters, what I expect to get from it, and what I found this far. So, not too much to say really beyond that I grew up in Dean's Grange, so anybody who all around the area, it's not too far from here. It's the house that my dad actually grew up in as well, he moved in there when he was the age of nine. And uh, when I was five months old, my parents bought it from his grandparents and I've lived there ever since until I moved out uh, four years ago, and I only lived down the road in the Lorgan. When I went local to school, to Tonkin College, off the back of that, I did a PLC course in computer applications, and in turn did a degree in computing in DIT chemistry. Throughout the school and college, I had a variety of part-time jobs from the age of 15, um, anything from being a cleaner in a nursing home, to working in various retailers such as Roche Stores, Next, Brown Thomas, all doing very similar roles. Least favourite of all my jobs was being a debt collector in permanent TSB. Um, it is not a pleasant job task to call someone while having their dinner and tell them they haven't paid for their car. Um, most interesting and my most favourite role though was during the summers in college, I was a kids' club holiday rep, which meant um, I would entertain and amuse your kids while you were sitting by the pool having a beer on holidays. Um, I did that for three summers, in 2001 and 2005 in Praia de Rocha in Portugal, and in 2002 in Porto del Carmen in Lanzarote. And it really was an enjoyable job, and definitely an experience I'd recommend, and somebody else pays for it. <laughs> then in 2007, I finally uh, graduated college and um, started working in IT, and I really didn't fit in in IT. I didn't like the industry, it wasn't for me, and through to be told, I just wasn't strong enough technical, and I decided it was time to stop swimming against the current and accept my career in sales like my brother, father and grandfather. It just had to happen, so it did and all was going well there. In 2008, one of my most life-changing experiences was I was at a house party in Dundrum and I met my now wife, Neve. Um, we got married last October, enormous uh, honeymoon throughout the States, which we absolutely loved. From Toastmasters, I'm hoping to gain a little bit of confidence in public speaking, um, hope to entertain uh, uh, as well as enlighten throughout. But I find myself halfway through, and like any good movie, you're wondering, where is Michael? Where is he? Well, in 2003, I went back to Lanzarote, and um, a few weeks ago, just to digress, Mr. Toastmaster mentioned that uh, Zorba said the worst thing was to let a woman go to uh, bed on her own. The worst thing is to bring your present girlfriend to see your ex. Um, and not to be facetious about the matter, I got handed a four month old baby at the age of 20, I was terrified. And the truth of the matter is I got home, told my parents, and none of us really knew what to do. Who's come across this situation before? And what really happened next was not a lot. And before I knew it, time had passed, people all sort of said, oh God, you know, not to get to too much detail, one night, what are the odds? You know, that's, that's the fact of the matter. <laughs> and the harsh truth is I did nothing. I, I avoided it and I lost a lot of time. Um, but as I said, life went on with thinking about it. And when I met Eve, just on the possibility that it was true, I said, listen, just so as you know, in case you want to get out now, this is what's happening. And then in April 2011, I was strolling down the pier into Leary, you know, half an hour of sunshine that we, that we get in April, and my phone vibrates into Facebook mail in very harshly worded Spanish, um, saying, what are you going to do about it? Stop avoiding it. My son is asking me questions all the time. Where is his dad? And I kind of figured, right, she's not chasing me at this stage. This is for real. And I spoke to Neve about it, and we went through it in all the detail. We said, right, it's time to do something. And I got over there as quick as I could, which was only in July. It was three months later. My brother was getting married, so I was best man and, and exceptionally preoccupied. So I didn't tell anyone except me at that point, and we went over for a weekend with a DNA test with a kit we could buy online. Although if you ever see a photo of Michael, you will see that was merely a formality. Um, <laughs> if I was Spanish, this is what I'd look like. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we now? Michael's an active part of our life. Um, he was at our wedding last year. His mother and my wife are two of the most understanding women I've ever come across. We've been welcomed in open arms by all the family. 
he's no longer something a secret or a deny about. He's a proud, you know, I'm proud that he's my son and he's a big part of my life. On uh, Sunday just gone, he turned 10 and uh, we all loud speakered around the phone and sung happy birthday in English, not that he even understood it, but we, we, we overcome these challenges. <laughs> I'm looking forward to his visit in the end of June. We're gonna have a belated birthday party and I've arranged the SpongeBob Bouncy Castle as per his uh, requests. And I suppose in conclusion, what have I learned from all of this? Well, on a personal note, my background, straightforward, not, not, not looking much to it. Strengths, in, in career, play to your strengths. I should have gone into sales sooner. But most important, and I would urge everyone in this room and pass this on to all your friends and family, if you have a relationship that needs to be built or one that needs to be repaired, make the call no matter how difficult it is. It is something that it might be embarrassing, it might be challenging, you might be ashamed of what happened in the past. Make that call because believe me, your life will be better for it. And I speak from first hand experience I thank even Joanna for their understanding. I thank Michael for being a great son. And to all of you, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.